Welcome to The Reverse Angle, interviews with Montreal's emerging student filmmakers. I am here with Sashka Avanyan, who's Hi. the director and editor of Questions of Femininity, and Woodneck Beach. Thank you for being here, Sashka. Thank you. So let's start with your beginnings and where you started. How did you get introduced to filmmaking? And would you say you have a, an overarching style that follows you throughout your body of work? Yeah, um, well, I got introduced to filmmaking, I guess, through using cameras and family videos. But really, I kind of um, started making my own uh, spontaneous little films just because I was inspired by short videos I'd watched online and on YouTube. Um, in terms of a theme, I don't really think I've had one developed yet very much. Um, I guess if someone were to watch all my films, maybe something they'd pick up is like kind of cultural conversations, very intimate, I would say, looks into people's lives. And I guess that's also what I do want to pursue in terms of going on forward. So what people don't know is that uh, you're the tender age of 18. Um, at what age did you pick up a camera? Um, I, uh, well, I picked up a camera very young for home videos, but in terms of doing my own work, uh, I only started two years ago. Uh, so when I was 16, I made my first film, and that was me videoing for the purpose of making a film that I edited myself. Uh, so yeah, two years ago. And what would you say are the influence that, influences that have shaped you to date? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I'm always interested in cultural conversations and kind of closing those gaps that people have in terms of understanding of other people. And um, I'm very inspired by online content makers because I do think that's the future. And uh, film is my favorite medium simply because I think it's the closest to real life that we have in terms of technology right now. You know, you have visual sound movement um, and, and that's why I think I'm so drawn to it because it's, it's the closest connection you have to real life as a viewer. What really inspires you? What do you want to put on screen? What do you dream of, of creating? I guess the big picture for me is uh, creating work that makes people think about their own values, their own belief systems, and conveys people's lives in a beautiful way that they may not have been able to be exposed to before. So kind of finding those stories that I think people could be interested in but don't have access to otherwise, and obviously making people question and think about their own beliefs and life in, in that way as well. Well, that's the perfect setup to talk about uh, questions of yeah, femininity definitely. because you, you do tackle uh, that subject matter. If I were to ask you to describe your film in three words, what would they be? Oy. Um, I guess uh, thought-provoking, cheating a little bit, uh, thought-provoking, femin <laughs> femininity, <laughs> and... Um, Conversation. Yeah. Also, a film that took place uh, in in two different countries. Yes. Uh, two different. Uh... Yeah, those were two different aspects of my life. Really, um, I didn't convey any kind of personal aspect in the film, but it, the film wasn't, in fact, very personal to me. Simply because the two perspectives that I did show were the two strongest perspectives within my life and that influenced me in my ideas of femininity. Uh, so because of that, the film um, was an interesting exploration for me because uh, the women that I interviewed were also women that uh, were quite close to me in my personal life. Um, and so uh, I think that bringing that to light to the audience that I, I managed to show it to uh, was very interesting because I don't think that came through, but I think that what I wanted to come through, which was that I wanted people to think about their own ideas of femininity, really did, and that's why I'm so happy with it, really. Well, before we cut to the chase and watch your movie, fill in this blank. This film will make you feel... Questioning. Well, without further ado, here's Sashka's Questions of Femininity. Absolutely. I, I don't know how to, I guess, define it. Ooh, that's really tough. Interesting question. Mm. What is femininity? Well, feminine has always been considered, I guess, weak 
weaker. Обязательно слабый. Um, and more concerned with appearance. The way that society makes it out to be is really giggly, not smart, uh, you clean, you love to clean. I think that being a woman simply means that I'm of a different sex. To me, to be feminine means to be loving and caring and to create home. Newness. Улыбчивость, оптимизм, забота о других обязательно. Это доброта, позитив и, и любовь. To be manly, you show less emotion and you're more gruff and aggressive, but are justified in your aggression. Whereas as a woman, if you, you want to be aggressive and you want to be assertive, that's wrong. You step back. Well, masculinity, yeah, I guess society and me too perceives it first and foremost as strength. Is that because strength never... different than what you view as the feminine strength? No, actually I think it's the same. And I'm sure you'll find if you talk to three men, they'd have three different versions of masculinity. Мой муж взял на себя все то, что относится к мужчине. То есть это зарабатывать деньги, обеспечивать семью, выполнять всю работу по дому тяжелого, да, вот что-то починить, что-то смастерить. Я не знаю, голову даст вам отсечаю ради своих детей, ради своей семьи. Но в бытовом плане он совершенно не понимает. Я на себя беру все то, что касается женщин. Чем больше занимаюсь детьми, так я готовлю вкусно, стараюсь поддержать свой порядок. У нас получается вот эта гармония. I just think that by creating this role of what a woman is or what a man is just contributes. It just puts a box, it just like it's a fence around people. Because what if a woman in that that society, that culture doesn't want to be like that? Естественно, что я и при каких-то вопросах где-то уступаю ему. Да, я понимаю, что он главный в доме. То есть если даже это не так, ты должна создать это впечатление, чтобы он чувствовал себя важным и главным. Я, например, мало общалась с людьми вот восточных, вот таких арабских стран. Мы, наверное, где-то посередине. Массипированным западом таким, да, и вот этой исламской культурой. С нашей точки зрения, когда мы на них смотрим, это для меня это было такое неуважение, что, я не знаю, в церкви сидят, и женщинам нельзя заходить в ту же часть церкви, где мужчины сидят, молятся. If someone is doing something... Not because they choose to, because they're forced to, because it's what society says, that's your place, that's when I find it bugs me. Посмотри, какой ужас, как они относятся к своим женщинам. Потом я узнала, что это не то, что неуважение к своей жене, наоборот, это чрезмерное уважение. A lot of the time in these countries where women can't do certain things, it's not because it's against the law. It's because it's against society norm. И думаю, то посмотри, этот муж лежит на диване, смотрит телевизор, а она там на кухне драет кастрюльку. Но это так и есть. To be feminine means to look pretty. In Armenian culture, it's more about beauty, mostly. What is up with all this attention, over attention on clothing and makeup and just looking pretty? Looking pretty. Why am I doing all these things? With the fact that beauty is such a big part of what makes someone who they are, I actually think that contributes to the fact that girls further degrade themselves. I think it, the born, the concept for me changed a lot during the several years. Like Ten years ago it was a different concept, the femininity that I had. Now it's a little bit different. I think that femininity, you know, is self-cultivated. It's you don't have to buy things to be feminine. You don't have to wear things to be feminine. It's it's in your manner. Search, you know, who I am. I think it's more like process. I can't find it. Студент у меня, если это мальчики, да, парни, 
Они уже девочкам не уступают вместо, они не пытаются помочь из них. Теперьшнее поколение немножко изменило. Я вижу, что э, мальчики уже больше готовы как-то э, взять на себя нагрузку по наведению хозяйства, например, помогать угу. своей жене. Они не считают это как унижение. Наша модель брака для меня она идеальна. Но смогут ли мои дочки найти таких парней, которые будут очень так же к семье относиться, у которых будут те же семейные ценности, что у моего мужа, у меня такой гарантии нет. В Армении немножко по-другому. Армянские мужчины, у них другой менталитет. То есть они э, потихоньку подошли к тому моменту, когда тебе позволительно работать. Ну, пожалуйста, делай все это. Но после этого постарайся дома быть такой же мягкой, же если успевать все свои домашние дела. Э, и, то есть если ты успеваешь все, пожалуйста, я не против, иди работай. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there are strong women or strong men or, you know, weak women or weak men. I think that they're just strong people and weak people. I mean, if I say that they're like puzzle pieces, then I'm kind of painting everyone with the same brush. Like, if you're a man, you're like this, and if you're a woman, like this, and it should fit like this. I think it's less about how men and women fit together and just about how people fit together. Женщины даже более сильно выбирают. Я не знаю, они дополняют друг друга. И всегда они, они найдут, как распределить между собой. Если есть взаимопонимание, если есть немножечко любви. And I think femininity should be defined by women themselves, like each woman, you know, and has her own idea of femininity. I don't think that there should be a finite definition of it. I don't know, every woman is feminine. Because you should never reject any idea of a woman. There's a certain femininity that carries with it some kind of deep confidence and a deep power. And, you know, very strong and mama bear. You know, that, like, that's what's feminine. So that's the femininity I would aspire to, but I think there are other types of femininity as well that are weak or empty. должна быть более хрупкой, нежной. Вот это равноправие, не знаю, мне не нравится. Не могу так спокойно и лояльно относиться ко всем этим смешению полов. Мне нравятся эмансипированные женщины, когда они наравне с мужчиной хотят что-то здесь. Для меня это просто вот неприемлемо. Они считают, что раз ты хотела равноправие, ну вот давай, пожалуйста, делай все не со мной. Она должна знать, что есть место, где я... Не знаю, она приходит и ее носит. Хотя при этом получается так, что в армянской семье она носит своего мужа на руках. And I feel like if there weren't those negative connotations, something would be so different. Something would be so radically different if it were okay to be a woman. Um, and I hope my idea of it is that it's not something aesthetic. It's something, you know endearing within. It's it's like the female spirit. In honestly I think that for me in my society I think it's the best because I can choose what I want to do and at the end of the day that's all that matters. As long as I can choose whether or not I want to be that dainty, fragile, happy go lucky mom who does everything perfect and or if I want to be that working mother, or if I want to be somewhere in the middle. I want it to be normal everywhere I am. I think femininity is a social construct, but I don't think because it's a social construct, we must reject it completely. That was a really gripping piece for somebody who's 18. Uh, it, really touched us and made us think. Can you tell me um, how this project came to be and, and how you came up with the subject matter? Yeah, well, it was actually pretty spontaneous because um, uh, the first day I landed in Armenia on my trip, uh, I was just uh, in the home where I was staying and I was speaking with the women there. And um, the topic of femininity and kind of female life within, in, within their roles came up. And uh, I just asked them, impromptu really uh, if I could film the conversation that we were having and after I filmed that first conversation uh, throughout the rest of my trip in uh, Armenia I actually kept pursuing different uh, perspectives of women in Armenia um, and so 
it, there was really no pre-production pre in this film, and it kind of came up in that manner. And then obviously I continued the interviews when I returned to Canada. And what did you put across? What striked you that you said, you know what? There's something to, uh, a message to transmit here. Yeah, for me, my main goal was not, I, I don't think people weren't aware that those concepts of femininity existed, uh, that maybe here in the West uh, would be perceived as quite restricted views of what it means to be a woman. Uh, but I did want to frame it in a way that kind of paralleled the two perspectives that made people think about it. And um, I don't think that people were necessarily shocked uh, because everybody knows that uh, people have these different perspectives. But I think that uh, the way I was trying to present it uh, was in a manner that got someone to think about it for themselves. Uh, and that was kind of what I was trying to pursue. Well, you know, I find like uh, as a Westerner living here in Canada, it, what's good for it is that also shows us that th that way of thinking is still present, it's still alive. So it, it's really good to expose us to that, that awareness. Yeah. What would you like audiences to feel and, and say after they, they see your film? Um, I know that uh, a lot of people who watched it did have strong emotional reactions to it. And I think that um, my, my personal hope for it is that anybody who watches it in the future and for the people that have watched it in the past is that they, they kind of, they, they, question their, they question their own concept of femininity, right? Because that's what I was doing with a film. And in presenting it to an audience, I, I do want them to do the exact same thing. Um, and, and if that does happen, then I mean, I really couldn't ask for anything more than a filmmaker. Uh, I mean, as a filmmaker, um, yeah. You I mean, want to start the conversation. Absolutely. So how has this film served you as an artist? And what, in the subject frame of femininity, what feminist advice would you give to young girls who want to start out already maybe at a young age in filmmaking? Yeah, well, I myself am a very young girl uh, in filmmaking, but honestly, I think uh, the stage that I'm in right now is uh, is still at the very beginning of it. I mean, I'm nowhere near uh, being experienced at all in terms of filmmaking, but um, I think that it's really important to focus on just creating as much content as you can and not being afraid of, not even failure, but just creating bad work. Because I think that there's, um, that you have an idea in your head of what good film is or like what good messages are that you want to convey. And I think that if you don't start doing them in a way that you know isn't exactly how you see it, you'll never get to the point where you will have work that uh, is what your vision is. Um, all of my work that I've done so far has never lined up exactly to the vision that I wanted and I'm never satisfied. I don't know if I ever will be, maybe, maybe not, but I think that the, the constant gener, uh, gener, not, not generation, the constant creation yeah. of work is really what, what will get you to that place and, and really creates the strongest learning well, experience. Every step gets you one step closer, right? Yeah, I'm really finding that. Well, you have a, a long <laughs> ways to go. I mean, it's great uh, that you're starting at this age. Um, let's transition maybe to something more upbeat. You submitted to also Focus Fest, Woodness Beach. Yeah. Um, a very fun, uh, uh, fun loving, you know, heartwarming short movie. It really made us feel like we were part of your family, but also that we were watching our own family in a way because we could relate. Tell us about that piece and why you wanted to do it. Yeah, um, like most of my other films, it was again very spontaneous. And I would say that the, uh, the filming process of it was extremely, I guess, amateur, if, if I'd want to use that word. But uh, the the fact that people connected to it in such a way was kind of a shock to me. I thought that it was just like a funky little uh, family video. But I think that it also taught me that, you know, it closed that gap between different families, right? That everybody experiences life in that way, even though we experience it within our own little groups and our own little families. The fact is that when, if I can convey that in a film and someone can recognize their own family or themselves in it, then that's just fantastic. I mean, what, what more can you ask for as a filmmaker to have someone connect to it? Absolutely. Let's, so let's go check out uh, Sashka's Woodneck Beach, which was submitted as a film in the experimental category at the Focus Film Festival at McGill. I'm not sure I really remember yeah. how to do this. It's, it's quite difficult. Yeah. No. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
That's such a fun short film. Um, you're also an editor. Uh, you're working as an editor right now. It's part of your uh, uh, bag of tricks. Um, tell me about the editing process on this. We see it in the film. Yeah, uh, this film, uh, really the raw footage that I have is my favorite stage in the process because I think that the whole film is created through the editing process. I mean, you can have the exact same footage that I have and kind of come up with nothing. Um, and I think that in terms of uh, my editing process, the music is import very important to my choices. And then also the arrangement of the clips, obviously. Um, I, picked, I picked a very nostalgic song for it, which I think is part of why people connect so much to it. Um, and it makes it kind of very flowy and airy. And um, I mean, I'm very, the, the, the process of editing this film itself was, like any other film that I've made, a very large learning process for me, simply because I am self-taught. Uh, and any time that I want to figure out how to do something, I have to kind of <laughs> wrangle my way through it, whether it's Google or trying to play around with the settings and the software. Um, this was one of the first films where I kind of played around with elements of uh, graphic visuals mm -hmm. in terms of, the, I mean, just the title and my name. Um, but, it, but it was my first step into understanding graphic design and how that interacts with filmmaking. And um, obviously, looking back at it, you know, you want to do so much more and so much better. And uh, uh, my, my next steps are, you know, creating the animated graphics uh, within film, which, which I, I guess started with this one. What's the biggest lesson you've learned so far already at this stage in filmmaking? that editing is a lot of power. Um, when you're given footage, uh, the, the edit, I think, uh, for me, is the most important. Uh, I mean, in all my films, I'm involved in every stage of the process. Um, but I think that without a good edit and without, uh, without having that dedication to the editing process, um, I think that you can come up with very different results. Uh, I, I've also learned that you know editors have a lot of power in, in terms of like even manipulating what someone else has said. Uh, I mean, it's very easy to um, project your own uh, kind of agenda. I mean, agenda is, it has a negative connotation, but project your own vision of mm -hmm. what's happening, even if it's somebody else that you're working with. And I think that I found that very interesting because, uh, I mean, this is going way too far, pulling uh, pulling out of it, but uh, it makes you kind of think of uh, propaganda in terms of how you can manipulate certain yeah, footage. I get what you're and, saying. And the fact that you have that power to do that um, it is fascinating. And, and I've definitely been exploring that a lot, a lot more. Um, because it, it's, I mean, to me, it, it's, it's magical. Like, that's why I love it so much. So where do you dream uh, to be as a filmmaker in the future? And what's the best career advice to date somebody has given you? <sighs> that's a big question. Um, I guess the, the big dream for me would be to continue creating work in larger projects uh, that are a lot more collaborative. And I'm always interested in uh, integrating different uh, mediums. Uh, there, are, there are so many fantastic artists here in Montreal and people that I've known throughout my life, both in Russia and Canada. And uh, I think that uh, collaboration is, is really something that I want to pursue further. And uh, I want to focus definitely on the same themes that I had in the Questions of Femininity film, um, simply because I do think that exploring the, the ability to make people think and the ability to uh, kind of show people different people's stories uh, is really what I want to create on, on larger scales and with bigger projects and with more people. Um, I guess the, the biggest piece of advice anyone's given me um, I don't know, just to kind of consistently have a sense of confidence. Um, I think that beating yourself up is, is, is really poisonous, uh, especially in, the, in a creative field. And uh, I think that creative, creatives are the ones that do it the most. Um, but I think that uh, when, you, when you have a passion for something, 
going for it is really the best thing you can do, especially at, at the point I'm at, which is the very beginning. <laughs> Um, and one last question. I mean, given that you're a filmmaker, an aspiring filmmaker, uh, you know your stuff, I have to ask you, what's your favorite film? Um, my favorite film is actually uh, Lost in Translation, uh, directed by Sofia Coppola with uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson and Bill Murray. Um, I just connected to it. I don't know why. I do like Sofia Coppola's style, not all of her films, but that one in particular, obviously, because it's my favorite. Um, I did connect to it on a personal level because uh, it, it takes like uh, Westerners and places them in a foreign land. Um, and I've often felt like that uh, with my bicultural background. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a favorite of mine. I, I watch it a lot. <laughs> well, thank you for being with us here today, Sashka. Thank you I so much, Catherine. I can't wait to see what's next for you. And, and don't forget us when you're on the big screen. <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching.